Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, um, from the Southern Cape again this morning. Uh, Steve Brown is in the background there. He came up with this testing and repairing of a shower leak. Um, it came to our officer's attention that there are many problems out there from consumers complaining that they had a plumber out there to test the shower or fix the leak and it's not fixed. Um, and it's just like when you go flying, uh, the flight attendant says to you, uh, there are three emergency exits on this plane. Uh, take time to locate it, uh, bearing in mind that the one nearest to you might be behind you. So this is very similar to testing a leak in a shower. Um, the one that you think is the obvious one might not be uh, the one that is causing the problem, and there could be various ones. So we're going to run this in a three-part series, um, and we're going to go through it slowly. Uh, if there are any questions, and obviously there are many ways of testing a shower as well, so you might have a better one as well. Um, but these are the basics uh, of the process of elimination to go through them and see how you can rectify them. And it's a bit of reverse engineering because we should actually tell you how to build a shower, how to seal a shower, how to waterproof a shower. But um, this is to find the leaks. And towards part three of the series, we'll be looking at how do you uh, waterproof a shower properly and what uh, products are available to do this. So let's go. So why have a talk about a leaking shower? We as plumbers don't take leaking showers seriously and try to fix them with a minimal cost because obviously the consumer wants to pay as little as, little as possible to fix this leak. The outcome of the path causes costs for the plumber as he has to go back and fix at own cost if not diagnosed properly. properly. The consumer greets the plumber on return with a great deal of animosity. So, you know, you've been out there, you check the shower and he phones you, he said, it's still leaking, you know, but now you come around second time around, it's going to cost you money going out there because the consumer doesn't want to pay. You've been there already. So you should have fixed it the first time around. Okay. Now we're not getting a response. So it goes. Why have a talk about a leaking shower? Still the problem with a badly, sorry. My screen is jumping slowly here this morning. Um, the problem with a badly constructed shower, of which there are many, is that one leak is masked by the other leak and only becomes evident once the first one is repaired. To find a leak is a process of elimination it's to be followed and you need to assess the leak in the appropriate manner. So first of all, inform the client that the process is no quick fix. Um, Talk to the client is key and applying the correct soft skills is important as this process of finding a leak could render the shower inoperative for days if properly repaired. So once you get there, Mrs. Jones uh, must know that this is not going to be a quick fix maybe. It, take time out to look at all the signs and then you decide and then prepare the client slowly as you go along that we might have to uh, block off the shower, leave it for a couple of days, whatever the case may be. So. Um, you must uh, have good soft skills when you approach the client on this. Quoting for finding the shower leak. This is very important as all of you can quote for this time. So call out an hourly tariff is the initial quote that you can give. That's all you can give. You can't say to Mr. Jones, I fix a shower for 800 bucks. It doesn't work like that. So it's important that the first quote that you can give is only for your call out and your hourly tariff um, because you still have to find the leak. It could be many things. So make sure the client knows this before you ever uh, you even leave to check the shower. Tell the client that we might not even solve this problem today, but we are going to test and try to locate the source of the leak. That is what you're going to do. You're going to locate the source of the leak. Once the test is done and you are sure that you have located the leak, you can start talking about options and quotes. Is a leaking shower dangerous? So, you know, why is it so important, you know? A leaking shower can cause dangerous mold and bacterial growth and infestation. At the worst case, obviously, you can get structural damage to the property. So what is the dangers of shower mold? While their toxic levels vary, almost all of them put your health at risk and should be removed as soon as possible. Mold could affect breathing, irritate mucous membranes, suppress the immune system, and cause excessive coughing, sneezing, and headaches. Also remember, 
health and safety equipment when working in showers badly infested with mold. So for your guys, for your protection, because you're going to be down on your knees looking at cracks in the, in the floor, etc. Is it safe to sleep in a room with mold? So, you know, why am I saying it's to sleep in a room? We're talking about showers. No, indoor mold of any exposure is worrisome, but mold in the bedroom is especially so, simply due to the number of hours you spend in that bedroom breathing in while you sleep. Beyond the immediate allergy symptoms, mold exposure often causes sleep issues too. So if you look at this photo over here, uh, you can see the wall blistering, um, the skirting was completely rotted and the mold black in the corner. And this was behind a child's bed that we discovered and the shower was on the other side of the wall. So yes, it is dangerous. Um, it should not be there and can cause dangerous problems. So it's actually, uh, once again, you know, a plumber is actually a health consultant. Why is it important to find a shower leak? After all, it's a cubicle designed to be wet. It's not a submarine command unit. At its best, it's a nuisance. If the floor is wet next to the shower, it creates a slip hazard. And because it's a health risk, at its best, as we have already established. So that is an important issue here. It's a health risk. So that's why we've got to find it and eradicate it. Structural damage is if leak, leakage occurs over a period of time without being seen to until such times that cracks start occurring because of these leaks. And we've had, you know, where they leak, you even have, uh, I've, I've seen a recent photo uh, on the outside of the building where a plant has started growing out of the wall and uh, the plants eventually, it's actually a tree of a wild fig and it starts cracking the wall. So what are the four most common causes of shower leaks and how to detect them? First of all, splash leaks, uh, high pressure leaks, drain leaks, wall and floor tile leaks. So today we're going to just have a look at splash leaks and high pressure leaks. In the next sessions, we'll go to drain and wall and floor tiles and some of them will be overlapping as well. So splash leaks are simply water escaping a shower curtain or a shower door. Easily rectified and identified by using a hand shower. Sorry, just one sec. <clears throat> Easily rectified and identified by using a hand shower and hose attached to the shower arm and spraying the door on the inside to see where, the, uh, where it exits the door frame. Or sealing off the shower floor, uh, you can seal the drain and flood the floor until it reaches the door frame and see where it starts leaking out from uh, beneath the door frame. Splash leaks uh, are nuisance leaks and is normally accurately pointed out by the consumer. So, you know, ask him, you know, where do you see the leak? Uh, and he says, well, in this corner, you know, when, when do you see it? Uh, you stepped out of the shower and you noticed that unusual amount of water on the floor. Where did you notice it? Does it occur every time? Get enough information to make a sound judgment call. So, you know, when you ask him, does it occur every time? No, only when I shower, you know, look at the person's profile. Maybe it's a big person and it's a shower tray. There's movement going in beneath that shower tray. And then you can start establishing. So look at all the signs, you know, if, um, ask him all the necessary questions. Observation, observe the telltale signs. Um, you know, obviously mold and cracks and stuff is another telltale sign. But old shower heads with this high delivery rate uh, or no shower head is all when you arrive there. Why? Because it produces more water than can be discharged by the draining system. Um, it's, it creates a, a dam that these guys stand or a whole pool of water and then it leaks. So obviously it's going to leak. So then maybe um, start by just saying, okay, well, let's put a shower head on uh, that is not uh, using so much water for, the, for a starter um, and uh, minimize the amount of water that goes onto the floor um, if, it, if it pools up. So if you open the shower and you see it start uh, arising and it doesn't drain away, there's too much water in the shower. It splashes more, there's much more water standing against the door causing a leak underneath the door. So that is, that is one of the most common causes of splash leaks is too much water in the shower uh, at, at one time and cannot drain away sufficiently or the water is splashing up against the door. Um, telltale signs, when you walk into the house, start looking, you know, if you approach the bathroom, first thing, go and look on the outside of the bathroom wall, you'll see paint blistering or cracking maybe. Um, uh, normally it's water escaping where the aluminium is not properly adhered to the silicon seal or look carefully for the channels in the aluminium extrusion that could be filling up with water higher up in the door 
and then running inside the channel and escaping under the door. So you get many different kinds of aluminum extrusions out there and it could be a problem that it's just running on the inside of the frame and coming out somewhere else. So try and establish, you know, if it comes out one place, have a look all around, look at up higher, up, look at the direction the shower head is uh, uh, being used. Maybe it's right up against the door, something to that effect. Um, you can maybe then say, well, look at a different shower arm where the water comes right directly from the top and it's not while showering up against the door the whole time. Um, or you splash, uh, or a splash rail incorrectly installed uh, or a dripping off, off after a pivot door is being opened. When you open a pivot door, it's got a little rail on the inside and that door is supposed to be installed with a, a bit of a, a, a backfall towards the shower. So when you open it, the water on the shower uh, interior of the door must run back in. It's like a little gutter and it must run back into the shower. But if that is uh, the wrong way around, once you open the door, it'll run and fall onto the shower floor. Carefully question the client when and where does it occur and careful observation is the thing of looking for these splash leaks. Ceiling splash leaks, uh, remove old silicon by cutting carefully with a carpet knife and wiping dry with a paper towel. Um, I've got a big roll of paper towel in my vehicle when doing this so that I can uh, uh, dry it off properly. I've got a heat gun as well, drying it with a heat gun. Uh, use something like acetone, which helps with the removal of the silicon and also helps removing fatty deposits, which present silica, uh, prevent silicon from adhering. Once clean and dry, seal with silicon-based product and finish it off. Normally, a shower door only requires sealing on the outside of the cubicle and not the inside. Dangers of splash leaks. In the case where a shower is set on concrete, the leak could damage the floor in the bathroom or the adjacent rooms or on a ceiling below. In the case of a wooden floor, rot could set in and discoloration of the wood will be a good indication thereof. If there's a vinyl carpet and it's loose, you can check underneath and you'll see the water marks on it. Why gather enough information? Because you will be paid for the first time you attend to the leak and if it sustains the next call out will be at your expense. So don't, and this is very important, don't send the most junior guy out as it is deemed a small and simple task. Rather your best guy on this. Finding a leak, use specialist equipment as such as thermal imaging cameras or sensitive listening devices. Um, at this stage, when you go out for a splash leak or something like that, um, first do the old method of elimination. But before you bring out these big gun equipments, go through this process of elimination. You have to determine if it's a high pressure leak or a low pressure leak or just a splash leak. So it's best to have the owner present to ask questions, otherwise get in contact with a person using the shower regularly. High pressure leaks or low pressure leak, water leaks, uh, or being a drainage leak, this is where the trick comes in, determining what kind of leak you have. Obviously, these kinds of leaks will show certain symptoms. Where do you start? With a high pressure leak, start at the, the equipment that you have available, your water meter. Ask nobody to draw water, go and check if that water meter is standing still. Put a man on standby at that water meter. Your typical layout of your shower, uh, head with the two taps at the bottom um, and it's all closed off. Uh, you can take equipment such as uh, metal detecting to find out the layout of the pipes. You want to know where the pipes are running in the wall um, to make sure that you can maybe start looking uh, between the grout where there are cracks or where there are water leaks maybe. So you want to know where those pipes are running and you want to listen maybe carefully. Maybe there's a slow leak that you can hear even audible uh, below, uh, below the, beneath the tiles. So look for the telltale signs like the old shower caddy hanging from the shower head. Um, that could loosen your, your shower head. Um, maybe that shower arm has been turned out and it's, uh, and it's loose in the wall because they hung the sh shower caddy there. Check the shower arm uh, for movement. See if it's loose. Can you turn it by hand? Maybe it's loose and move that cover plate. Have a look at behind the cover plate what it looks like. So then what you can do is put on a ball or stop onto your shower arm um, because that's where you, uh, where you can release the water once you've uh, put pressure onto it again um, because you don't want unnecessary water hanging around on your tiles now while you're doing the tests. So you shut off the ball valve and you open the hot water tap. So I'll tell you later why the hot water tap. So you've got pressure now in your shower into that typical shower uh, outlay beneath the tiles and then you start ob observing. Look around the shower arm. See if there's water coming out maybe behind uh, the wall plate 
uh, listen, cover, move the cover plates back from the taps, look, listen around the taps in the area where you located the pipes, check the wall behind the tap pipe area, give 10 minutes and so, um, and then uh, if you've got a ceiling access there and you can go to the pipes above the shower, go and feel the hot water pipe. If the hot water pipe is starting to become hot now, um, you know it's drawing hot water somewhere, maybe it will be leaking. That is, uh, if there's a leak on the hot water pipe, that is just one to sort of eliminate that there's a leak on the hot water pipe. So it stays cold, so no, maybe not a hot water leak. Um, so check the water meter for movement. The guy standing there, you, you contact him and say, is that water meter moving now that I've switched on the water? So now you remove the pressure off, close the taps again, and you put a stopper into the shower arm where the shower arm was. And as you can see on this tile, there is no grout around the shower arm. Another telltale sign already there for us. So the possible areas of leaks on a high pressure side. Um, if you look at your typical outlay here, you look at the arrows, it will be on the joints above and below the, the taps um, uh, where the T-piece is, and obviously at the shower where the shower arm goes into the wall plate. So those are your typical areas of leak. Um, otherwise, uh, of holes and corrosion in the pipe, those would be typically where you will find high pressure leaks. So what to do is you take a stethoscope. If you've got one, it's quite cheap to buy a little stethoscope. Um, and you start listening where the pipes are running. Maybe you can hear uh, water squirting out there. Um, you can even take a screwdriver, listen, uh, put it up on your ear, and start listening where the pipes are. Maybe you can locate something audible. So if a leak is spotted or heard, take the appropriate action of informing the client of your possible course of action. Don't go opening up tiles and chopping it off. Maybe there aren't any more tiles left of that. Um, you have to discuss that with a client. You can't just go chopping up the wall. So now you've got to go into the course of action if you've just determined that there is a high pressure leak. If a small problem is there, like the shower head or arm is loose, uh, continue looking for other problem areas as that that might not be the only one. As I said earlier, you know, they say there are three emergency exits, bearing in mind the closest one to you might be behind you. So yes, um, fix that one, uh, put some tape around that shower arm, put pressure onto it again, and uh, then start going through the process again. So now you've left that stopper into the wall there and you've got it switched on, but you see nothing, nothing is happening. So now before you open up the wall, you just leave it like that and you might have to discuss with the client coming back a day later uh, to see if something has changed. Maybe there's a wet spot occurring on the wall behind or something like that. So if you're in doubt, ask the client for extra time and say, we'll have to come back tomorrow to check and see if there's anything uh, occurring behind or beneath the, uh, the shower taps or whatever the case may be. If it entails opening the wall and you are sure don't just dive in, first complete the inspection of all possibilities as the source could be coming from more than one area. Consult with your client. Signs of trouble, damp, discolored, and the smelly carpet, curling vinyl floor or loose tiles next to the shower, peeling or bubbling paint on the walls, watermarks on the ceiling or joists below, underneath, mold spots on the wall and floor of the shower. So look all over. Um, the typical one behind the shower, you can see that the paint is peeling off. It's very clear that it's there, but it could come from anywhere in the shower. Um, and sometimes they have cupboards behind these uh, showers. And with this one, the cupboard looked totally intact. I didn't see a thing. And once I put my hand on the shelf, it actually just disappeared underneath my hand. So um, it, it open up that cupboard, ask ma'am, can I please have a look inside the cupboard? I just want to see behind the walls. Moisture meters can help and assist if it doesn't have too many telltale signs, they are inexpensive, they're not very uh, expensive equipment. That could be a, a piece of equipment that you can uh, use to locate uh, the moisture on the wall, see where the, the, the reading is higher than other parts of the wall when uh, looking for high pressure leaks. And be careful in your observation of pipes and even for electrical conduits, um, that metal detector that I showed earlier as well, that can detect electrical conduits. Once you start opening that wall for high pressure leaks or something, you might even find electrical conduits running there sometimes. Um, and uh, this one you can see clearly it's been chopped into, so be very careful. If still in doubt, uh, finding, request the client not to use the shower for a couple of days if possible. Leave the stopper in place on the shower arm position and keep the tap open. On return a few days later, do an observation to see if there's any changes in the signs or new signs of moisture. 
drying out the shower before you go for the first time is always a good idea as it keeps gives you less false signs and then very important i didn't highlight it yet but it's take photos have a portfolio of evidence from you uh, the day you start with the shower leak where you are going to observe it take photos of the cracks because if the insurance company is involved you need that information to give to the, to the insurance company so that is it on the high pressure leaks and splash leaks this morning um, testing the drain and tiles will be the next attraction so are there any questions this morning Right, so we do have two questions here for you. The first one reads, if you only seal a shower door on the outside, then surely this will cause the shower frame to rust quicker and dampness will always be present. Um, yeah, I, I, I thought I would get a question like that. Um, I actually got that information from a uh, installer who does uh, professional installing of shower doors. Um, the doors don't necessarily rust because they're all aluminium. You do get moisture going in underneath, but that moisture can uh, then come out. If you are sealing it on the inside, what happens is if you do have a channel on the inside, the water will run down that channel and it cannot escape. So it fills up and then it slowly leaks somewhere else. So um, if you seal it on the outside, uh, it'll go up to that gasket and it will drain back towards where it came from. So that is the, the logic behind it, you know, for that aluminium extrusion, which has uh, is basically a tube. So on the inside, it will run down that tube, but it's got nowhere to escape. So that's why you leave it open on the inside. Next question, right, Sean. Perfect. And then the next one's uh, more of a comment. It reads, the easiest will be to attach a pressure gauge on the shower arm and see if the pressure drops after closing taps. Yes, that is a, a very good one. Thank you very much for that. That is also a way of doing it. You can also do that. Uh, not everybody has a pressure gauge there, but it's a very cheap piece of equipment and is uh, obviously also a very good one to use. Um, you can use that. Thank you very much for that input. Right, and then we actually just received a, a the same comment from another person. So thank you very much to you too. Uh, the next one here reads, it was mentioned to use silicone to seal the shower. Is it not important to use marine waterproof silicone? Well, um, that's why I said silicon-based product. Um, there are so many different silicons out there. If you want to go and uh, discover the world of silicon, you can go to a shelf and just see there. There's one for baths. So there's one for gaskets and high temperatures and you name it. So, well, read the instructions uh, of the silicon-based product that you use and make sure that you are using one that is uh, for the correct usage. Um, my experience is that all these products um, are, are exactly the same uh, in uh, what they do and uh, the way they adhere and the way that they dry. So I don't really think that is a big difference. And I do see people selling a universal silicon most of the time. Um, the thing about silicon, the important thing is read the instructions of application. That's why I said dry it off nicely and uh, very dry, the area that you've got to put it on. Use acetone or thinners and uh, wipe it down again with the paper. Because if you're using a rag, that rag is oily. So you're putting back oily deposits uh, on that area where you're going to put the silicon. So it must be very, very dry. So you dry it out and clean it as good as possible and then the silicon will stick. So um, the, applying the silicon is the important thing. Um, the type of silicon, not necessarily, um, uh, as I see that uh, some of the manufacturers just have the universal silicons out there. And marine silicon, uh, I think uh, sometimes is just a way of selling a product to make it maybe more expensive than the other one because it's got a specific application. But I don't doubt it that there are applications for certain types of silicons. But the ones that we use for showers, uh, the universal silicons uh, appear to be the best uh, all around uh, anyway. Right, perfect. And then the last one I've currently got on the list here reads, shower is tiled with slate tiles and I am following the necessary steps to seal the property, but after a while it starts leaking again. Is there anything else you can do to seal the shower except silicone? Well, it depends on where they're putting the silicon because silicon does not like going onto tiles, you know, onto the slate as such most probably. Um, look at the area that you've got to put it on. 
Um, I'm not so sure. I think if that person maybe can uh, send us a mail or you give me the address or then I can just chat to him just to find out exactly where he wants to use the silicon. If you're using between the floor and the, the tile, that is most probably not the solution. Um, a silicon best is just to be used on a door frame. Um, so I think uh, let's chat to the person and just find out a bit. I need a bit more information to actually give a, a call on this one. Right, 100%. So I've just taken their um, email address and I shall be sending it to you shortly. But other than that, guys, I have got no questions. So, Maurice, would you like to go ahead and end off from your side? Yeah, thank you very much, Sean. Um, and thank you very much for listening. Um, and thanks for the inputs there. You know, as we said, it's a process of elimination. Um, we have uh, get many various ways of doing it. And uh, please, guys, you know, take care out there when uh, looking at the shower problems that uh, occur. Uh, they are not easy to find. And as I said, don't send the youngest guy out there with a, with a silicon gun. Send your best guy out there to go and assess the problem and uh, prepare your client. Talk to the consumer. That is the most important thing is that soft skills, talking to the consumer because you might be chopping off the tiles on the wall. Um, find out information like, do you still have more tiles available out there? Do you have some tiles stacked in the, in the roof or something? Um, so that you know you've got that information at hand already um, so that if you are going to open up that you can fix it. Start looking at uh, if you are removing tiles, is it going to be in the center of the shower? Can they maybe, if they don't have tiles, can you maybe replace this with a mosaic patch that could look good? Um, uh, but obviously that is going to be up to the client. You discuss with the client, ask the client, would you like to go and, uh, go and have a look at tiles so long? So we have to open this wall, but we are testing some more. Um, if you want to find out uh, uh, if you can get tiles, whatever the case may be, try and get that information so that it will shorten the time that this uh, show will be in operative. And other than that, Sean, thank you very much. And thank you guys for listening. Goodbye. All right, 100%. And just from our side, guys, thanks so much for joining us. Please do not, um, or please uh, go ahead and answer that survey, which will pop up in your web browser when I do end the session off. And guys, I hope everyone has an amazing uh, weekend to come. Enjoy the rest of your week, guys. Bye-bye.